Welcome to Legally Speaking, a podcast from the Utah Attorney General's Office. Here, we will be discussing matters of policy and justice, cases that our office is taking on, hot topics in Utah and in the world, but of course, it'll all be done, legally speaking. Hello, I'm Richard Pyatt from the Utah Attorney General's Office. This is Legally Speaking, the Office Podcast. Thanks for coming in and joining us. With me today is Scott Carver, who is the Director of Training, Law Enforcement Training for the Utah Attorney General's Office. We're here talking about a very specific and unique and useful law enforcement tool to deal with police use of force. Scott, um, the system's called the VERTRA. What does VERTRA stand for and how would you describe it? Well, good morning, Richard, and it's great to be here with you in the audience. Uh, welcome. Glad that you're tuning in. The uh, Virtra Virtual Reality Training Simulator is a cutting-edge, state-of-the-art, virtual reality, interactive system that we use to train officers in uh, situations that they will encounter in their regular course of duty but that they get, it gets very complicated. And so we're able to give them almost real life experience uh, and train them in decision making and judgment skills, in tactics, in communication, in de escalation, in use of force, uh, in an environment that is safe, no one's going to get hurt. And uh, we're able to give them experience that they will need. Uh, hopefully never encounter, but be able to call upon in the event that they do. So basically, I like to look at it as sort of a really fancy, full-size video game where you've got a person with a, with a firearm and a scenario playing out, but on huge screens all around you to immerse you into the experience of what it's like to face real-life encounters. And Is that accurate, or do you like not like the... Refer to referring to it as a video yeah, we, game. we prefer not to refer to it as a video game because right. it is so much more than that. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I realize that, but just for <clears throat> for people that aren't aren't familiar with it, it's uh, it's very it's very much a, a, an amped up experience. I mean, it's not like it's not like you're a passive participant here. You're in that experience because you're surrounded by it. Correct. So for the audience's sake, uh, I might describe what the system is like. So uh, it is a, a platform surrounded with five uh, very large screens so that it gives a 360 degree perspective. Uh, each uh, screen is uh, connected with each other and then it is controlled by a master computer so that in that surrounding scene, uh, you are immersed, as, as you say. It is interactive in that, based upon what the trainee does and says on the platform, the controller, myself, or my partner, Will Falk, can change the response of the people, the actors on the screen. So with that, two officers can go through the same scenario. Say it's a domestic violence situation or a, uh, a person with mental health issues acting out in a city park. And those two officers can have two very different experiences based upon what they are doing and saying. And in that way, we can uh, vary the situation, we can vary the outcome, and therefore teach multiple segments with the same scenario and actually the same officer going through it multiple times. The uh, system uses uh, equipment that the officer is familiar with. We start with a Glock Model 22 uh, semi-automatic handgun. We convert those to facsimiles of firearms and they shoot laser instead of ammunition. The uh, <clears throat> We also use tasers that shoot uh, lasers, not uh, probes. And uh, with that, we're able to give the officer a real life experience uh, using firearms and weapons that they are familiar with. The screens are life size, so you're, you are uh, in a situation where 
you become emotionally attached, visually attached. Uh, the stresses and the uh, physical reactions are very real. Uh, they can experience tunnel vision, auditory occlusion, and, uh, and some get uh, very excited uh, in these scenarios. So it's very immersive and uh, the experience that the officers come away with is very dramatic. What's the usefulness that you find? What, are the, what kind of feedback do you and Will get from other officers about how that syncs up with their real life experience when they get on the job or when they get back on the job? Well, the most common response that we will hear is, wow, I've never experienced anything like this before. And this is so real. Those are the kind of experiences that officers have. And that's the value of it is uh, the officer will, will go to common call types that they're going to experience in their everyday work. Um, <clears throat> as they go into that, they will be faced with a situation that is very dynamic. Uh, it's uh, rapidly evolving. Uh, there will be uh, decisions that have to be made in split seconds on their part. And whether that is de-escalate or whether that is uh, I need to use force and what level of force do I need to use, those are the kind of decisions that an officer must make and they, they must make it very quickly. The scenarios that we use are, are brief. They run generally two to four minutes. And then at the end of the scenario, the training occurs where we can rewind that scenario, that video, and walk the officer through and ask the questions such as, what was your legal justification for doing what you did at this point? Why did you say this at this point? Why did you do this at this point? If you could do this scenario again, what would be your, uh, what would you change? What would you do differently to improve the outcome of the situation? So um, we're able to, to put the officers in those situations. The variety of trainings that that gives is a multitude of, of education. So we know that uh, we as humans learn through education, training, and experience. And this gives all of those, uh, touches all of those uh, points. It teaches officers to be able to communicate better if it's a de-escalation situation. It teaches them situational awareness. Be aware of what's going on around you. It teaches how to work with another officer as a partner how to transition between a weapon and de-escalation or de-escalation and the weapon. Uh, it, it teaches the fundamentals of law enforcement. Uh, we also can teach tactics like firearms training, uh, the, the, again, the use of force, legal issues. What, does, uh, what is the legal requirements of that use of force, whether it's shooting a suspect in the back or detaining a passenger of a vehicle or uh, entering a home without a warrant or an invite. So those are the, the benefits of this system is it's placed in as real a situation as we can without actually being in that real situation uh, and we can make mistakes, learn from our mistakes, and uh, in an environment that is safe and no one gets hurt. Okay. So you've worked in uh, several law enforcement agencies. How realistic would you say the scenarios are that, that, that are in the virtual system? The scenarios are all very realistic. They are based on uh, actual incidences that have occurred. Uh, and whether it's a domestic violence situation or an active shooter situation, uh, they are very realistic. And uh, we've seen officers' heart rates get it very high. Uh, one participant had a, a, an Apple Watch with a heart monitor on it and 
and registered 175 beats per minute. Wow. And uh, so it is, it is very realistic. The situations are realistic. The, uh, they use a dispatch in a lot of time. Sometimes it's an on view incident. Uh, so uh, it's, it's uh, very realistic in that regard. So in the news in the last couple of years, at least, there's been, there's been a number of police shootings that have been questioned and investigated. Um, a lot of the scenarios strike me as similar to the ones that these police shootings were about. Would you say that's true? And do you think that um, the de-escalation techniques are useful in helping diffuse some of those situations so that this kind of risk is minimized? Well, yes, and so, so to the first point about officer-involved shootings and the use of force. So, uh, police work today has evolved and has changed and will continue to change over what it was just 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago. We cannot do police work the same today as we did when I started. And the society's perspective on use of force is the focus point now, <clears throat> particularly officer-involved shootings where the use of lethal force has been applied by an officer. And that's what we see in the media today is usually those anomalies of police use of force when the situation was such that perhaps the officer did not follow policy or law or common sense, and a bad outcome occurred. Those are always a concern, not only for the society and the community, but for the law enforcement agency and the officers involved. We take a very hard look at that. That is why we in law enforcement spend so much time in firearms training and use of force training because the consequences are very serious. So whenever there's an officer involved shooting, there is a, a microscope uh, view put on that. And the purpose of that is to one, make sure it was justified in that it, it followed law and policy and two, to see if there's anything we can learn from that to reduce use of force the next time perhaps. The de-escalation effort that law enforcement has implemented over, over actually the last uh, decade or two uh, with crisis intervention training and multiple de-escalation trainings is an effort to reduce use of force through trying to talk individuals down, trying to uh, come to a conclusion that does not require use of force. Mm -hmm. Use of force by police actually is very rare. Uh, it's only, and use of lethal force is extremely rare. It's in the, uh, a study where they looked at the 50 most populated municipal cities, the, in, you know, over 100 million police contacts in a year, 10 million arrests, the use of lethal force was 0.003% of the uh, arrest contacts. So uh, an officer involved shooting is something that everyone pays attention to. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, more law enforcement agencies should utilize the virtual system as a regular part of their, of their training? Or is this, is this something that's still in the phase where it's nice to have? I think it's been proven that it is a very, very valuable type of training that should uh, be available to every law enforcement officer. We offer our services to any agency in the state, in law enforcement, uh, whether it be federal, state, county, or local. Uh, we also will offer our uh, training in a special program for community leaders to municipal leaders, all stakeholders that have a, a voice in what their police departments do. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we enjoy training legislators, education leaders, 
the media, faith-based leaders, all of those individuals who influence the community perspective and have an interest in what their departments are doing. Okay. That's all I have for you today. I appreciate you coming in. Very welcome, and uh, glad to be here, and hope you found this informative. Okay. Thanks, Thank Scott. Thank you for joining us for Legally Speaking. We'll see you next time.